This tutorial will show you how to georeference a raster file and how to create new vector layers from a raster file including editing vector files and adding attributes to those files. This section will take you through how to georeference scanned maps. Perhaps the most useful maps for community projects are the Ordnance Survey 6 inch to the mile maps that were published from the mid 19th century. OS maps over 50 years old are now out of copyright and can be used without any special permission. That means that you can use the post Second World War editions of the 6 inch map which, unlike their predecessors, have the Ordnance Survey National Grid superimposed. This makes georeferencing much easier and more accurate. And once georeferenced you can use these maps to georeference older editions. Remembering that in GIS we change the letter code at the beginning of a grid reference to its numeric equivalent, carefully measure 12 figure grid references for at least 4 points on your scanned map, such as the grid intersections. QGIS calls these ground control points or GCPs. In QGIS go to Raster, Georeferencer and this opens another window. Using the Open Raster button select the map that you want to georeference and if prompted set the CRS to EPSG 27700. Now using the Add Points button click on the points on the map that you have grid references for and enter the coordinates and you repeat this until all the ground control points are entered. You don't have to use the intersections of grid lines, you could use buildings, road junctions or field corners, as long as you can accurately measure the grid reference for that feature. Here you can see that I've entered 4 points across the map. 4 should be the minimum number of points to add, and your points should be widely spaced. It's the placement of these points and the accuracy of your grid references that control how well georeferenced your map is. Now select the transformation settings. These settings will have to be set the first time you use the georeferencer but will be remembered after that. Click on the icon next to the output raster box and this by default saves a copy of the map in the same folder as your scan but with the suffix modified added to the file name. You can actually override this if you want to save the georeference copy to another folder or with a different name. Click save and then OK. You can now click Start Georeferencing. Once again, if you're prompted, set the CRS to EPSG 27700. You can now see the map has appeared in the main QGIS window. When you close the georeferencer window, you'll be asked if you want to save the ground control points. Although not really necessary, this can save time if you want to go back to the map and improve its geolocation at a later date. So once you've got a map georeferenced, you can then use it to georeference other maps. You might have a situation where you have several different versions of an Ordnance Survey map of the area and you want them all georeferenced. So first of all we'll open a map just like we did previously. So if I pick a feature that I can find on both maps like a wall corner here, I click on it and then I use the From Map Canvas button that takes me back to the first map and I click the same point, the same wall corner on there and now that point is placed. And I'll go a bit further over and choose another. Go across here like that and there's the same one. Okay. And keep doing that until you've got a nice wide spread of points, minimum of four but preferably more and then uh, then just as before you press the start georeferencing button. 
Now we have a georeference map, we can use it to create vector layers by tracing features on the map. Vector files can contain points, lines or polygons, but not in the same file. To create a new vector file, go to Layer, New, New Shapefile Layer. And firstly select Point, Line or Polygon. And then just check if the CRS is correct, and here it is, EPSG 27700. By default, the file will have ID as an attribute, and you can use this to number the features that you're recording. You can also add additional attribute fields, either now or later. So when you've added all the fields that you need, press OK and give the file a suitable name. This example is going to be point data mapping lime kilns on a map, so I'll just call it lime kiln. And save it. You can see that the layer has now been added to the layers panel. To add records to it or to edit it, first select the layer and then select toggle editing by either right clicking and clicking here or by using this button up on the toolbar. I can now zoom into the map and start to add features using the add feature button here. And we'll call that one number one. Call this one number two. If you want to move a point and correct its position you just use the Move Features button here, click on the object and move it. Now as you're adding features you can save them up here with this button to save layer edits. When you're finished save the edits and use Toggle Editing to exit. As well as features on the map, a vector layer also has an attribute table. At the moment this layer only has a field for ID. I want to add another field where I can show if the lime kiln still exists. On the attribute table is another button to toggle editing. I can now add a new column and I'm going to call that extant. and it's going to be text information in there and I'll put a width of 10. You need to put a width wide enough for the information that you intend to uh, add to the table. Here all I'm going to do is add a simple yes or no. Again save the changes and then toggle the editing off. I can now change the way that the points are shown on the map by going to Properties and Style. And this time instead of having a single symbol for all of the features in that layer, I'm going to use Categorized. And if I then choose the column extant and I can click Classify, you can see that the GIS knows that I have values for no, values for yes and I can change both the symbol and the colour for these categories. I'll just make that a little bit bigger like that. Make this a different colour and bigger like that. And then I can click apply. And there you can see that we now have different colours for the lime kilns that are still there and for the lime kilns that have disappeared. It's important to point out that uh, a shape file is actually composed of five different parts and that becomes important if you want to move the shape file on your computer or you want to share the information with somebody else. I'm going to create another vector file, this time composed of polygons to represent the fields. So first change that to Polygon, check that the CRS is correct 
and then in the attribute table I want to I want a new column where I can put the field names and check that it is set to text and that the width is appropriate and then I'm going to click add so now you can see that the attribute list will have a field for ID and a field for field names so and I'll click OK and I'll save this as fields if I select it and toggle editing I can use the add feature button to start tracing field boundaries and I right click when I'm finished and here I could add a, a number for the ID and the name of the field in this case I'm going to do that later so click OK so there's the first field drawn I just want to change its transparency which is going to make it easier for me to go in and edit the shape and if I zoom in and you can see my polygon doesn't quite fit the field boundary so I'm going to use the node tool here click on the shape and then you can correct it by just pulling these nodes into a better position and if you need to add another node just double click and that will produce one next I'll save the edits and then I can go back to the add features button and add the next field. <laughs> 